Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay and today I have put together a little conceptual game for us to play with some special guests who have the FE function. Now, if you know me, you know I'm a little bit obsessed with learning how this function works and operates and how I can apply some of its tools into my everyday life. So what I did is made up some questions that apply to some real life scenarios and we're gonna see how people with FE will respond to those questions. So, question number one. Mm -hmm. You're stuck in a long line. Okay, some of these may have happened before to me too. These may mm -hmm. actually be based on real situations. Yeah, I, I was wondering like, are these like specific times that you've been stumped before and not known what to do? <laughs> a few of them are, a few of them are imagined. So, yeah. take that. Um, okay, so you're stuck in a long line at Target and a small child in the basket in front of you is trying to get your attention. If you engage, it's highly likely that that child will demand your, your, your attention and your entertainment for the rest of the time while you're waiting in line. What do you do? So, I mean, my um, gut reaction would be to interact with the child and like entertain them. Like that's just, I've literally done that so many times um, or just like even help the mom out in some way. I've done this like on a plane. I've done this like waiting in line I've been there and even though it can be I could see how it could be annoying like if the child's really like I don't know really into you or something but children typically like me for some reason and I just really love children in general so I also want to have a lot of kids so that's part of it but yeah I totally would interact with the child yeah so for me I've never been the sort of person to know for a fact I wanted kids. So I don't like have a personal affinity necessarily for kids any more than I do real people. But even like you saying that I'm realizing like I must have an affinity to some extent because I would never not interact with the kid. You know, I, I mean, I'm going to smile and I, I normally say hi. Like, I mean, it's hard to not smile at least if you're looking at like a baby. And I guess my first thought too was, well, how cute are they? <laughs> was my thought. Because I mean, sometimes, and also what mood am I in? I mean, I, I would say more often than not, like, and I, I find it interesting that you also asked, um, what if you, they're going to demand your attention the rest of the time? I would just have no problem engaging as much as I want and then just stopping. Even if the kid was annoyed or, or whatever if I felt like a demand of my attention I just I wouldn't I wouldn't care once I decided I would just say oh hi and then move on I I yeah I never really feel obligated in those situations I think because since I could be a big presence and I know that I'm never obligating anyone I just I, I don't know with that interesting <laughs> no those are both really great answers and not like I wasn't a hundred percent. I mean, I was expecting more in that direction, but, um, so to contrast, I'm going to be the one that's going to, I'm going to avoid eye contact as much as I can, because I just am not going to know what to do once the child like engages with me. And like, if it's a long line, I'm like, we're going to have to like do something for like maybe eight minutes. And like, how am I supposed to entertain a child for eight minutes? And this is all very much for me. <laughs> And so, yeah, this actually, this actually, this scenario actually happened before. And I was just like, and then I left and I was like, I feel bad. Like that mom probably could have been like, wow, that girl could have been said hi to my kid or something for a few minutes while I'm trying to get my groceries out. And in a way I really wanted, but I was just afraid of being stuck and not knowing what to do. So. <laughs> so are you, were you, are you like afraid of like accidentally doing something that would make the kids sad? No, I'm just. I just kind of don't have a lot of ideas of what to do with kids. And so it's like, I just wouldn't know what to say or do kind of, you know? Like what's appropriate for them? Yeah. I mean, some of this might be the fact I never had siblings and I never, mm -hmm. never like babysat kids really. So that could be an element, but in general, it's just more like, 
what I can't talk to you like an adult human. I mean, that would be easier in a sense. Could I, cause I could try to like make small talk, but then yeah. kids not so much. I would say personally, I am, I'm good with kids. I, I'm definitely not like afraid of kids, but like my sister's an ESFJ who would always want to babysit and stuff and like knows exactly what to say to kids. Whereas for me, I would definitely like say hi and like even like, like smile, like especially if it's a baby. If it's a baby, I'm going to like try and give them a stare down or like be sort of like funny with them. But like at a certain age of kids, I, I like, I prefer to treat them like, um, I, I prefer to talk as I would to an adult because I just have weird memories of being a kid and wanting to be, you know, respected. And so I almost sort of want to empathize with that and like treat them as their own individual with that respect. And so I, I never, I never want to do too much of like the baby voice or anything like that. Although like, I don't know. So like, I, I get, I, I feel like I sort of relate to not really knowing exactly what to say to kids, but um, it's not something I would ever like think that much about, I guess. Gotcha. That makes yeah. Sense. <laughs> Cool. All right. Great answers. Let's, let's hit the next one. Um, <laughs> I feel like when I'm talking to feelers about these, they're just going to be like, Lindsay, these are the dumbest. <laughs> 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 well, that makes it fun. Okay. Um, so you are staying at a platonic friend's house out of state. He or she tells you that they're going to a family barbecue today and they would love you to come with. Your original plan was to go hiking alone. What do you do? <clears throat> Family barbecue. <laughs> do you want to go first, Emily? Or I mean, you can go first if you want to. Okay, I just didn't know if you had it yet. Well, okay, I one, I don't like hiking. Two, I would never have a plan alone whenever I was visiting a friend. In <laughs> um, I would definitely go. Um, I mean, whenever, okay, whenever I visited my best friend, Crystal, who's an ENFP in LA, I was there for a week and I literally, I completely exhausted myself. I was doing things, like we, we wanted to do something fun every single night. I mean, I was up, we were, I was just running to maximize my time with her that I, to the point where I didn't even sleep it up every night. Like I didn't have any second, I mean, like. The only time I got alone was when she was at work, but like I was like anxiously waiting for her to get back from work. <laughs> I know, I, I, yeah. I mean, I don't even really take time for myself in general. That it seems crazy to me. Well, or, or like I never, I especially would never think to take time for myself if I'm visiting a friend. Because, yeah. But also, I don't personally. I mean, to me, a family barbecue sounds fun. <laughs> so like if if there was something else that I did want to do like instead of hiking then I also wouldn't have a problem telling my friend um if if it really was like something I wanted to do um so I guess I would want to clarify that I wouldn't be like oh I'll go to the family barbecue because I'm afraid of the social weirdness of if I don't go it's just that I would want to go um, so it's hard to imagine that scenario. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Emily, what do you got? Okay, so, I mean, I do like hiking, and I also love being by myself. Like, I mean, I do things all the, all, all the time by myself. I feel like I'm just, like, I guess some people would see it as, like, dating yourself, because I just like doing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, um, depending on how close the friend was and if I'm staying with them, I bet that we would be close. I would want to go to the family barbecue as well, even if it was like a guy and there might have been like some weirdness in the sense that like they may assume that I'm like their girlfriend or, or his girlfriend or something. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in a similar situation and I guess for me, I would try to compromise, like see if we could do both. But if we couldn't, I would probably do um, the bar barbecue because to me, I can always go on a hike. But for this situation, this could be like, especially if I was like really good friends with this person, I would be able to meet their family and get closer to them. 
good answer. Yeah, that's a very good point about the try to compromise. Like if there was something else I would try and do, I would think, well, let's find a way for us to both be happy. And I also think another thing to your point is that if I'm really close to someone, like I'm really curious about their family because I want to know, like, I want to know about them. And I would think like, well, well, like for example, like my best friend, Crystal, as I mentioned, like she's like Chinese American. And whenever I visited her family once, like I went to like uh, one of their like parties, like in Portland for like Thanksgiving. And it was like a Asian Thanksgiving with like uh, all these different like types of Asian food there. And I was completely like out of my comfort zone. I mean, they weren't even speaking English, like, and I was, and she didn't even have any white friends, like, growing up, and so, like, they didn't even, I don't know, it was, it was interesting for me, but I know how impactful that was for her, and so I'm curious about, about those sorts of things, if, if that makes sense, like, yeah. what, what made you the person you are today, sort of thing. Yeah, that's really interesting, um, and that's, yeah, those are both really good answers. I think where I would kind of find myself is I probably would end up going um, like both of you, but before I would just, I would get like really worked up and overwhelmed and be like, I can't do this. I should have just gone for the hike. Uh, I would probably try to do the compromise thing. Like Emily was saying, be like, Hey, is there any way we can maybe go to this for an hour and then maybe go do this? Like would that work? And if they were a friend, they'd probably be like, yes. And then I'd be like, that would give me the calmness to be like, okay, I can get through like the next hour of, you know, talking to aunt Sally about like her crocheting, <laughs> you know? And, um, cause a lot of times like more of the small talk is really where I'm like, I don't know how to navigate this. I mean, I can verbally and I can intellectually, but I feel like my heart isn't really in it. And so it's just hard to get around. So I would end up going and probably once I was there, it would be fine. <laughs> but it's more like the anticipation of like, I don't know if I can do this. But. Well, I relate to you on that because I probably would feel oh, like pretty similar in a mm -hmm. lot of ways. Because even though I would want to, and actually I would feel guilty if I didn't mm -hmm. um, personally, just because, like, if they were a close friend, I would know how much it meant to them, or, right. like, I would assume, and, yeah, I don't know. I hear that word a lot with people from FE, like, they feel that sense of guilt with certain situations with people, mm -hmm. and so that's been something interesting to track. A, fr a good friend of mine is an ENFJ, and often she uses the word guilt about things that, like, if she can't do something for one, she's like, I feel guilty, and I'm like, they're fine. Like they're functioning just fine without this thing. And she's like, I know, but the guilt. And I'm like, okay, interesting. Yeah. I relate to that. And another thing too, I just want to say is that I really cannot stand small talk. I don't enjoy talking to, you know, aunt Sal, like those sorts of things. Like I, I do get awkward, like, even though I'm an extrovert, but at the mm -hmm. same time, like, um, I just, I, I guess, if I was a friend showing up to a family barbecue, I'm going to assume that everybody there is really just there to see their family. They don't care about me. I'm going to think they aren't even really looking at me. Like, um, even if I would not have a great time, it mm -hmm. would just be interesting to observe. And I, I might even be sort of in the corner or just like eating food or like sort of like being with my friend or, or like, yeah. it's not like, and I get like, some ENFJs might think differently or, or like even like ESFJs might be wildly different uh, when it comes to the small talk. But like for me, it's not like I'm going to go in there and like make a bunch of friends or be the life of the party. I just, um, cause I, I mean, I don't, I, I would just want to go like for my friend and maybe even sort of follow them around the whole time. And like, mm -hmm. I, I, and I also like, I wouldn't want to like bother their like family discussion, you know, I would make, I would feel more comfortable if the family was like, Hey, like, tell me about you. Or like, we're playing a game. If they like did something to make me feel included, then I would, but, um, I would want to give them their space too. Like if I sense that. Yeah. This is a good one. I bet you this one has happened to both of you before. So <laughs> worst nightmare. No, just kidding. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So you end up at a mall 
And as you walk through, a kiosk worker chases you to get direct eye contact, compliments you on your radiant skin, then asks to rub their amazing product on your hand. <laughs> <laughs> this has literally happened, I feel like, oh to God. everybody that's walked in a mall. <sighs> I feel like my answer might surprise you guys. What? Maybe not. Maybe not. Well, probably not Emily, but... I mean, I would just give them a dirty look and run away. Like, how dare you? I mean, I wouldn't feel obligated, like, to be nice to that person. I mean, if they were, like, actually being nice or if I can, like, get a sense that, um, like, that's just their job yeah. and that they kind of have to do that. Like, whenever it's customer service and I, like, empathize with the person and, like, you know that the organization's making them do that and they hate it too, then I'll like be sort of nice. But if they're like trying to scam me, like, okay, the other day actually, like I was at like the grocery store and there was like this guy like selling chicken. Like, I don't really understand like why, but it was like by the deli. And he was like, um, hey, like, why don't you come over here? And I, I said, um, no, thank you. I'm fine here, actually. Like, I mean, I, I like say things like that, like, to the person, like, because I like see through it. And I don't like when people treat me that way when I'm, or I've even said before, like, well, can't you see I'm trying to shop right here? Actually? No, <laughs> like, so I can be sort of salty back to them. <laughs> right on. <laughs> what about you? Em? So <laughs> I have had many situations like this. So, I mean, if I saw them at a distance, like even a small distance, if I was walking on one side of the mall, I would walk the complete opposite side and I would walk as close to the wall or even go into a store to avoid them. <laughs> but if I was confronted with them and they were just like, cause I've had this where I've literally tried to do that and they just like come after me. I'm like, beautiful lady, beautiful lady. <laughs> like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Like, I will be like, ah. and no, but really, if they do, I'm just like, no, thank you. And I just like walk really fast, but I walk really fast in general. Um, I just really walk fast and I don't, I just will not look at them and I will say, no, thank you. And I will walk. Um, but yeah. 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 That's another good option is just to ignore yeah. completely. But I don't know if it's like me being an FE dom versus like auxiliary, but like I feel the need to like let them know how I feel about it. You know, like if I'm if I'm annoyed, like I'm not gonna pretend like I'm not annoyed. I want to like express the, my distaste for the fact that that is their sales practice. Totally. <laughs> I guess for me is I just know that they're. I mean, that's their job, and they're trying yeah. to make a living. So I don't really bother with it. I'm just like, all right, this is your hustle. I'm gonna like squirt uh, skirt yeah. over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I. So I. I kind of. So I pretty much order everything off Amazon these days. Like there's me too. Like, <laughs> I don't ever go to malls. Yeah, I never do. But on the occasion that I have, and it's usually because my husband wants to go into one. And he'll be like, oh, let's go to this. And I'm like, oh, okay. He'll be like, let's go get boba tea. And I'm like, fine. <laughs> and um, and so on the rare occasion, like I'll, I'll do an Emily. I'll, I'll like hit the farthest walls. I'll walk on the floor that I know doesn't have the kiosk, you know. But um, there was this one time we were walking through and I was doing my own thing. I lost track of Ben. And all of a sudden I hear, Lindsay, Lindsay, come here. And he's standing next to one of those kiosk workers. He's like, come over here. Oh, <laughs> no. And it was like, I gave him the, the dirtiest death stare I possibly could. I'm like, you're literally going to put this on me at this very moment. <laughs> and I'm going to be completely trapped. And you're bringing me into the trap. And <laughs> he was like, yeah, they have this really good salt scrub. And it's fantastic. And I'm just like, I'm going to, okay, yep. Can we talk for a moment? <laughs> Got out of there. But yeah, so good answers. We're, I feel like we're all kind of on the same page there. Well, so. I've also like pretended to be on my phone too. Like any way to just like not, like make it very obvious too. Like I will just like skirt away. Mom? <laughs> this reminds me too, like when I was in college, there used to be a lot of people that like would hand out brochures Mm -hmm. and I would just not take them yeah I mean like if it looked interesting I would but sometimes it would be I mean you might some might expect FE to be like 
feel the need to be nice and take the brochure. But I mean, like, I just wouldn't, I just would say no. See, yeah. actually, that was my, one of my jobs in college. I mm. did, um, I worked for my university stadium and it was called street team. And we had to hand out flyers for like events and stuff. So I definitely get it from both angles. Cause I'm not like when someone's trying to hand me something, I just like, will avoid them. But I was really good at it. Like when people would give out like a hundred, I would give out like a thousand. But nice. I yeah. was just, and I, yeah. Uh, or sorry, what were you saying? Well, I just don't, I like have gone over rejection. I just like, will move on to the next and not worry about it. Yeah. And that's another thing I think for me and like, even with the other scenario, like there's going to be someone that wants that. I mean, if the product is good, then there's going to be someone that wants it and it's just not me. And it's like, I know what, whenever I go to a mall, for example, or, or even when I was walking in class, like I was like on a mission, like going from here to here, like, and I walk, I walk fast too. But like, um, and, and I guess I also will kind of match the emotion that the person gives me in a way. Like maybe Emily, if you were handing out a flyer and made the event sound cool, like maybe I would take it, you know, like, <laughs> but if people were like kind of trying to get in your face in any way that I would have maybe deemed disrespectful, then I have no problem. I, I don't feel obligated, I guess, to be respectful back or take it you know I just leave but yeah that's interesting good stuff mm -hmm. all right next um <laughs> you're waiting in a line for a snow cone on a hot day the people in front and behind you are furiously angry at how long the line is taking what do you do Um, and you can make it really simple, but just like, I would just stand there and get my snow cone. That's fine. I would maybe even start, start talking with them or be like, um, I mean, I personally am not one to complain just to complain. Like I, I understand that, it, but like, I would maybe be like, do they have another worker? Like, or have you been here for a while? Like, is it taking forever? Because not because I was trying to like complain, but because maybe if the line was taking forever, maybe I would just decide to give up and not get the snow cone and do something else. Like yeah. I, I would maybe like try and feel out the environment. Like I wouldn't be annoyed by the people like mm -hmm. talking. I would either, I would maybe <laughs> chat just to maybe help me decide if the snow cone is worth it. I don't know. Thank you. Our squeaker taken away. <laughs> okay, cool. So you would just rather prioritize your time somewhere else if it was going to be too much. Yeah, money. yeah. But I guess yeah, and I wouldn't be annoyed. I might, I might talk with them. Like, yeah. Well, and what about you? Um. So I actually, even though I wouldn't necessarily be annoyed, it just it depends. I would actually tell them I was like oh wow this is so annoying and they kind of make a joke out of it and like just be like oh when is this gonna like be over with or just like I don't know that's what I would kind of do assuming mm -hmm. that I want the snow cone just like how Megan said but mm -hmm. I would assume if I was that close in line that I did and mm -hmm. it's not gonna take that much longer so I'm like just kind of trying like seeing that they're annoyed and just like engage them and like even ask them like this isn't the snow cone in, like scenario, but like um, when I was in Amsterdam, like what three years ago, I went. I was going to the Anne Frank house, and mm -hmm. the line is like notoriously long for that. Mm -hmm. And instead of just like, I mean, obviously people were waiting and they were kind of like frustrated and stuff. But instead of like. I don't know I kind of just engaged with them and I asked them where they were from and kind of got to know them in line but if I felt like they didn't want to engage with me I wouldn't talk to them um it just like yeah that was kind of what I did that's a great uh thing to mention because I was just thinking like if I was at a conference or something I mean like whenever I went to South by Southwest once like uh in Austin like for for work and like um 
I was in like lines that I remember being in a line for like an ice cream place. And then I ended up getting in a great conversation and learning about someone's business, you know, or like I, if I'm at a space where that makes sense or where I would even be curious about the people around me, then I would definitely use that as an opportunity to be like, um, Oh, like what brings you here? Like, um, Mm -hmm that sort of thing. Or like if I was in another country, I would use that as an opportunity to ask them about something. But Hmm. I think the thing for me is that it's not, at least it's never just mindless chatter. It's like, if I'm curious, like if I have, if there's nothing I'm curious about, it's not like I'm going to try and like be their best friend, you know? Yeah. I got you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. So that's interesting from from both sides. I think for me, I would kind of get a little bit annoyed that they were complaining because I would know that the person who's making the snow cones obviously doesn't want them to be waiting and obviously doesn't want them to be annoyed in line. So it's not like they're purposefully making the line longer so that these people won't be annoyed. So I'm just, from my end, I'm just kind of getting annoyed at them being like, yeah, it's not their fault. Like, you know, just, you don't need a snow cone to survive. Like if you don't want to wait, you can go leave, you know? Um, so I would get maybe a little bit annoyed at that. And if someone got like really pissy, I would maybe be like, well, you don't need, you can leave the line. You don't need to get a snow cone. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Uh, that reminds me of something actually is that I went to, um, I went to VidCon last year and I realize okay like the way that they did their lines just made absolutely no sense and like I was bonding with a lot of people like that was a jumping off point to discuss and I think there was someone there who I think was an INTJ from like talking with them later that seemed to be like judging us so much for complaining and I like (laughs) sensed that and in my mind I was thinking at that moment like it's not that deep. We're not, we're not judging them. We're just talking. You're bonding through the situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that was, that was my, yeah. It's about the situation, but also like, I would never blame the individuals. I, I'm blaming the system. I'm blaming like, they should have thought that through so that there wasn't a line. Like I would never blame like the worker, you know? Yeah. yeah. If I knew that the worker could hear like that, I was saying that the line was annoying, like as Megan was saying, kind of like, like just kind of empathizing with the the other people in line Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't say it because Mm -hmm. I know at Starbucks so I used to work at Starbucks and people are so evil like in line at Starbucks or just like in general that I've seen more evil people at Starbucks (laughs) than I have in my whole life yeah. Um, so I know how like pressure, how much pressure the people behind the scenes are feeling too. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think one time um, uh, a psychotherapist who I, who I knew who had he had Effie like amazing, amazing, beautiful Effie, and he said um, <laughs> he said you know sometimes when people are like in a place where they're just like annoyed about something or something's bothering them, he's like all they want is someone just to bitch along with them, and I was just like. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. And I totally knew what he meant in that moment, but it was something I would never just do, you know? I'm like, this isn't, I mean, I I don't feel this way. Like, why would I, but it's like for being kind of for the person in that moment. And I was like, ah, makes so much sense. (laughs) It's almost like a way to transform the feeling from being annoyed to at least, hey, if we're all in the same place, might as well like make the line like not, not boring. Yeah. 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 Very, very interesting. Okay. Um, so, all right. So this one's kind of, you're, you're the odd one out on this one. So you go with some friends to a comedy show and you think the comedian is terrible, but everyone you're with is laughing. Do you play along or not? What do you do? Yeah, I definitely wouldn't play along. Mm-hmm. I would probably tell them afterward, like ask them why they thought it was funny. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, I would definitely not play along, but perhaps I would feel like, what am I missing? I would be curious why, what value they saw mm-hmm. and then would try and like see the point of it. Cause like, for example, I don't really like movies like in general, like those, 
it's not a comedy thing, but there's been a lot of times that I've gone to see the movies, like with my sister and stuff, where I like get really bored, and I'll like try, I'll try and at least wonder, well, what is the appeal that you see, and then find a way to bond with them. But then, I also have no problem just like being on my phone or like waiting till it's over, just tuning it out, mm -hmm. thinking about something else. What about you? Em? Um. Well, I would probably vocalize it and I would probably do it in such a way that the comedian heard, but I would do it in like a joking way. Like, okay, you, you kind of suck, but like be serious about it. And then maybe by doing that, it would make it more entertaining and make it more fun. Like, I don't know. I, I just don't have a problem doing that, honestly. And like, I mean, my friends, I would be like, oh, this is weird. Like, I don't, <laughs> yeah. but, but I wouldn't make it awkward. Like if I really felt like, you know, by doing that, people were kind of taking it too seriously that I was kind of being mean or something, mm -hmm. then I would probably just like dial it back and maybe just wait it through like uh, Megan was saying, but I'd probably try to engage with it. So yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And another thing too, like, I would like I would say something to my friends during it if it was one of those things where like we were like at the bar in the corner but like if they could hear me talk like I would be like polite and not like say anything like if it was that sort of show mm -hmm. um, yeah and I'm realizing even as saying that that perhaps that's what like ITJs with FE blind maybe that's the thing that's hard for you to even know like is it the sort of show or, or like is it something where they can hear like is that is that the issue like not being able to read if it would be awkward or not right is, is that it okay no, yeah I think, it's, I think it's more like <laughs> <laughs> he's literally taken every single toy he has like out of his basket just so he can squeak the squeaker oh my gosh because he knows he's not supposed to be squeaking. It's really because I'm talking to you guys and he's not getting my attention. He wants to be a part of the YouTube channel. <laughs> he wants the commenters to be like, what type am I? Type, my, type me by my barks. Yeah, I think for me, it would just kind of be like, if I didn't, if I didn't like it, if I didn't think it was funny, um, I would try to wait it out for like the sake of everyone else, but it would just be, um, uh, I don't think I would leave. Like it takes a lot for me just to walk out on something, but I'd just be like, oh, this is the worst. <laughs> um, but I, I like both of like what both of you are saying. I mean, Megan is a curiosity side and then Emily's just like, I'm going to make it fun. Like this is my <laughs> option. <laughs> so those are, those are both good. Um, okay, so this one, I think this one may be a more common one too. Um, okay, so a friend of yours tries on a dress that you can tell she's in love with. You think it looks pretty terrible. She asks you if you like it. What do you say? You can go first. <laughs> I would say that she looks really pretty in it or like I mean not in it I would say that it's a nice dress or maybe like if I didn't think it was a nice dress then I wouldn't say that but if I was a good friend to that person I would say like I know you really like this dress but I think there's dresses that could look better because like this one I don't really think is like flattering you in the right ways or maybe it's not the color like that you need or something I would just be honest I mean that's kind of like how I am uh mm -hmm. like for example my friend Anna she doesn't necessarily wear like things that I which is all she's an ENFP she doesn't wear things that are like necessarily ugly but mm -hmm. sometimes it's almost like is it appropriate for the situation and yeah. like so I'll kind of say hey maybe you might want to rethink that like and I mean, if they really love the dress and, you know, I don't say it in a rude way and they're not like super offended by it and they're like, oh yeah, well, I still want to get it. I would be like, that's cool. This is just my opinion and I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah. So maybe I just don't pay attention enough 
to close. But my first instinct in saying that is that it's, I'm having a hard time conceptualizing a, a possibility where somebody really loves it and it really looks bad. Because I guess I tend to think that if someone loves it, well, I, I think people in general, I don't think there's like really rules mm-hmm. to fashion. If someone really loves it, then they are likely pulling it off. But I mean, I guess I would be able to sense like, do you really love that? Or are you just wearing it because you think it looks cool sort of thing? Yeah. But if someone like really loves it, I would never not tell them to not get it. I would maybe just say, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear it. But mm-hmm. like, just for con context, I guess, like my ESFJ sister who maybe has more of a, this is what fashion is idea in her head. Almost every outfit I wear, she tells me, you look weird. Or like when we were both in, in college together, she would say, you look like Kimmy Gibbler or like, you look like, um, like hipster trash or like, she would just like, I love say, she would just like make fun of me, like straight up. Mm-hmm. And then like, there was like one time that I looked, I seemed sad about it. And she was like, oh, no, no, like you pull it off. I just would not wear it. She, and then she like was apologetic. But like she, I mean, she will tell me like, well, I think that looks ugly or I think that that part looks ugly. Um, but yeah. And, and, or like even like my ENFP friend, um, like I would, I could tell that she would wear things that she didn't like or like that didn't really fit her style or didn't, didn't fit her vibe. And there's been times I'd be like, why are you wearing that? Cause it doesn't even seem like you like it, but yeah. I guess like liking it seems very like connected to if it looks good in my brain. Gotcha. I don't know. Interesting. That's interesting. What you said about being aware if someone, if it's not connected to what they actually like, and that's more of what brings awareness of it to you. Yeah. Like, cause I think like fashion in general, I view it as like self-expression and Mm -hmm. I would sense the disconnect between who they are and what they're expressing. Interesting. Yeah. I think for me, what I would kind of end up doing is if I could tell that they were really happy in it, I would say something like, well, it's like, if they asked me like, how do you think it is? I'd be like, well, it looks like you love it, you know, because then it's, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of an honest answer but without me bringing like my opinion into it. Cause at the end of the day, my opinion doesn't really matter anyway. It's whether that thing works for them or not, you know? Um, but if it like, if I could tell, you know, maybe that they weren't sure about it or not, I think I would maybe default to, um, well, like maybe there's something else that you would like better or, you know, why don't you, I, I always tell people to marinate on it. That's my kind of word. I'll just be like, why don't you marinate on it and then come back to it, you know? Um, because I think sometimes when people have the time to think about something, then they're able to determine more on their own if it's for them or not for them in pretty much any genre of whatever it is. So, um, that's probably what I'd end up doing. (laughs) I don't know. I feel like there are people that are out of touch with fashion though. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, out of touch to an extreme level maybe. And like, especially if it's someone's wedding day or like an event where a lot of people would see them, I would definitely like say something because I would... I would just like think about like how many people would end up saying something to them or like I don't Mm -hmm. know but I'm gonna actually get something that's really fashionable that I think you guys are gonna completely love actually yes yes do it it's really crazy looking through this right now like I don't know it's like this is what I'm seeing (laughs) yeah but I got these in Urban Outfitters and obviously like I personally don't find these fashionable um but I did it for the meme. I don't know. It just yeah, depends. I think cool. But yeah. I, I've um someone was handing out like color therapy glasses one time somewhere where I was and they were like they had red ones like that. They weren't as cool looking, but they were like them blue ones, green ones, and they were just like, Yeah, this when you wear this color, it'll like help, you know, tune your vibration to something. And I'm like, okay. And it was really crazy because you wear them for a while and then your brain gets used to seeing that color basically and kind of normalizes it and then when you take them off your whole color spectrum is completely out of whack so it's really oh. where your brain takes a moment like it takes like five minutes to adjust back to how you normally see things so that well, was it's really like crazy. literally rose colored 
glasses. Yeah. That's crazy. How long yeah. did you, uh, I mean, how long do you have to wear them? Because actually that's an interesting experiment. I think I wore them for about 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, before I had that. And um, I mean, they were like the bigger kind of like waviator. Um, waviator? Did I just make that up? <laughs> waviator. <laughs> an aviator oh my gosh they're like the wayfarer kind of glasses and um so they're bigger and yeah like 15 minutes and I think the purple ones are the weirdest ones yeah but anyway it's really interesting that is interesting <laughs> yeah it makes me think about how if that can influence your perception so much like the ways that our own filters like change right that yeah yeah, it really does. It's like what, and I kind of think that's like how like type is. It's like yeah, we're looking through our own lens. Yeah, you know, it's the world. You know, I'm looking through an INTJ lens. You're looking through an INFJ. Like it's just like that's our lens, and it's like we do our best to understand how it would be to wear someone else's lenses. You know, on our face, but it's like we still aren't wearing them. You know, <laughs> it's like our idea of what it would be like to wear purple color glasses if we only were able to wear red. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, that's true, but also sometimes finding out your type or finding out the fact that there are other types could almost feel like you can almost feel as lost as taking the glasses off. Like not that they're ever off, but that's sort yeah. of like, ah, wait, so what's reality then? <laughs> like it's like also stressful. Totally. Is right <laughs> I love those glasses. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just going to wear them example. for the rest of it. This yeah. is like an example actually is that I've seen people pull off those sorts of glasses Mm -hmm. you don't like them and so I think it looks bad <laughs> well, also you're not supposed to wear them like this you're supposed to wear them like this and it's supposed to be like a look with way. like you're supposed to have like a like an, a fashionable outfit and stuff it's supposed to be a look with yeah, l-e-w-k so I can see it yeah I'm expecting an Instagram photo <laughs> <laughs> oh there will be I think this might be some one that a lot of people can relate to or something like it. Um, you get a scathing email from a coworker about how you really messed up on a project. They copied five additional managers that were not even involved in the task at hand. What do you do? Like no one wants to get that email. <laughs> um. Okay, so I'll go, and that's that's a hard one. Well, one, I would be literally dying inside, mm -hmm. like absolutely. I don't try. Uh, like, I would be aware. I'd be aware of what I did, like wrong, and what or like. Okay, well, I'm the sort of person in general that I'm so trying to avoid things like that that I'm always asking clarifying questions. Like I, I err on the on the side of being like, "What are your expectations? Are they this? Are they this? Are they this?" Mm -hmm. So if that were to happen, I would know exactly what systemically in the organization led to that. It would, and I wouldn't be blaming people, but I would probably be thinking like, "Oh, this is because so and so like." like there wasn't clear enough expectations for this project or this is because you thought you were doing it and you thought I was doing it. Like I, I would like see some, I would have some sort of conclusion on why it happened and I would right. know what I did to try and solve that because I probably would have anticipated it or have been, have been trying to make sure this didn't happen to begin with. Mm -hmm. And so I would probably know like all the things I did to try and make sure that this thing didn't happen and maybe feel betrayed or um, like that I'm not able to explain myself or like I would maybe feel like alienated or misunderstood or feel like, oh, I tried so hard to avoid this. What did I do wrong? But I was in a situation where there was like a major misunderstanding with like a freelance client I had. And I like, I kind of regret this. This wasn't a necessarily the wrong move but I ended up sending like a three paragraph essay back uh I I spent like a full hour trying to think about what my logic is and what to say and I this was a freelance capacity but if, I, if it was like someone I worked with 
in real life, I would just ask them like, let's have a conversation. Like, like I, I maybe I'd be thinking, why did you lump them in when it wasn't their responsibility? Mm-hmm. And I would be embarrassed by that, but I would just be like, let's, let's not do the email thing. Like, let's just talk about it. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you where I was coming from and you tell me where you're coming from and let's figure this out. Like, I, I would so much rather talk about it, but I was in that situation where like, I was trying to be concise and I didn't know what to do to move forward to. And so I just said, this is where I was coming from. Where were you coming from? Or I was under the impression this, which is why I asked this, what are your thoughts on it? Like I, I like can be very wordy, but I, I don't, yeah. Like I would definitely like, I can tell it would really bother you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully that is, yeah. Answers the question. Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> what about you, Emily? Um, well, I would think about it and depending on the situation, I would write out a short email, um, back to everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what I would do basically the same thing I say in my email, I would go over, I would confront, I would actually ask that person to come into the office with the other managers and I would confront them in front of the managers. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been in situations like this where there's this one girl when I was a, I was the captain, like the president of European union. Mm -hmm. And she, I was trying to kick her off the team because she was just a little biatch and I, and she just did little things that it just needs to, she just needed to go. Mm -hmm. Um, so she tried to like make me into the bad guy. Um, and I just CC'd her on every, I mean, I CC'd everybody on the thing and like, you know, she thought she was being smart by like emailing our, um, professor and stuff. Um, but I just like kept him in the loop about everything. Um, or like if she would just email me or something, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I really would be like a bit taken aback by it too, but I've been in situations like that where people are trying to, I'm going to take these off, um, Mm -hmm are trying to like put you I think some people feel like they're they're like trying to get ahead like Mm -hmm. definitely seen this with certain personalities that they feel like threatened by that person because like chances are I didn't do anything wrong and if I did it was like some little thing like when I was an RA Mm -hmm. I was like the only person that actually followed all of the rules as an RA and this one girl used to like rat me out about like the stupidest things like she would say oh Emily didn't do this or something and it was like the most minute things but she thought that I was like ratting on her because I guess everybody did because I was the only person that um that actually like did the job but I didn't know that I just like did it and I didn't know that people weren't doing that Mm -hmm. um but yeah, so it ended up being like other people that were ratting each other out, but that was a little bit interesting. So I just know where I stand with people and I try to have things on paper. Mm-hmm. Like I try to have like a digital like stamp yeah. so that like I'm like, oh, well, mm-hmm. on this day we did this or something. Like try to remember that or like write it down or something so that they can't really do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I find this interesting too, as an EJ with like the tribe and self thing, like you're telling me that the tribe hates me. Mm -hmm. What? (laughs) It's sort of like, and I'm impressed, like, I'm, I'm impressed, Emily, that you're able to still have that perception of, oh, I probably didn't even do anything wrong or like know what you did wrong. And like understanding that people are just like that, because when I'm in the moment like that, my assumption is like, what could I have, it's like, even if it was maybe their fault, like, I'm like, what could I have done differently? Or what could I have done to make sure this didn't happen? Or like, even if it was their fault, like, it's still my responsibility, I'm in this situation. And so what should I do about it sort of thing? And like, I probably then like, after a while, thinking back, like, I would know, like, oh, they were like, seemingly threatened by me or or like I would be able to see it more clearly later but like Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think that like the whole email like copying I think it can be kind of like a catty move from people um 
And like, it, this has happened to me like once or twice. And like both times I was like, I'm going to make sure this person regrets this decision. Yes. <laughs> and so I will pull up every backup email. Cause like, it's usually as chances are, it's not, it usually doesn't fall on me. And, and I will go back through, I'll find every single email. I'll get every single piece of backup. I'll find every email that I sent that no one replied to. And I will attach it every single piece of that email completely listed out to be like here are the a through you know two blowing. of why you know this wasn't the actual situation but since you brought it up you know this is what actually happened and this is how we can prevent it next time so it's not going to be directing the blame at that person but it's going to be very clear about the fact of what actually happened and the actual clarity behind it and be, and I will you know copy everyone back not just that direct person so the times that like the two or three times I've had to do that, that that person has never pulled that move again. Well, I Um, don't think that I keep a a keep track mm -hmm. like that. And so that's a good thing. I'll have to steal, but yeah, I had who said, he said, keep everything on paper. He's always just like, you never know when you're going to need it. I was like, that's a good tip. (laughs) Yeah. That's exactly why I do that now because like I used to I mean I'm the type of person that I do want to confront them like directly Mm -hmm. but I just know that that doesn't fly especially like a lot of people like again like eight or nine times out of ten it's not even you it's just like them being like little biatches or something like I don't know yeah I think you're (laughs) I think you guys are right And like the ability to spot if they're just being catty or not, I think that my general assumption is that it is a misunderstanding. And then I just blame myself initially to be like, what, what did I, what did I do wrong? But it's like that in combination of thinking like, even if I did do something wrong, even if I was the worst employer ever or employee ever, that's your responsibility to tell me and the way that you told me was not okay. Like I still, I still would think that. And I, I try my best to always be really open and like let people know that they can talk to me if there's a problem, like come to me directly if you have any constructive criticism. And I try and make it clear, like it's never my intention to do anything like that. But I think what, what you were describing, Lindsay, of like, sort of this is what happened and this is what we can do to make it not happen again that is what would be hard for me that's what I would not know Mm -hmm. what to say interesting that's interesting yeah that's a really good I know we weren't even trying to go for that but that's a really good EJ IJ kind of like defining line with how we handle people like that's a really that was a good just happening well I also sometimes will play the opposite card and like play stupid Mm -hmm. like I'll just act Mm. like I'll just act like I well not in the sense that okay I wouldn't act stupid towards like my managers or something but towards Mm -hmm. that person like I probably do know that person's intention or at least I have an idea of that person's intention and why they probably do that because like I have a really good ability I mean I don't know if this is good but like of figuring out people's insecurities and like what they're, what they're, yeah. uh, Yeah. And so I would probably just like, even though I, even if they were a weasel, I would still be like, Oh, you know, it's okay. Like, Oh, it's just a misunderstanding kind of thing. But yeah. Interesting. It just depends. It's like, and the benefit of the doubt. Also, part of this, I think, is both of you guys having stronger NI and just seeing the situation. Well, I don't know. I mean, because I know I'm like a I'm like a double observer, right? Mm-hmm. Versus yeah. you guys. So I don't know how those two things interact, but also just the idea that your NI is stronger, where like I like with my FE stronger, like the the disconnect between the people could almost make my NI not as strong for the moment is how it feels. Yeah. I see. I see what you're saying. It's people with NI first. It's like, we're anticipating for like the world world to explode. Like we're anticipating what's going to happen before it happens, before it explodes, you know? And like, 
we're expecting those things to happen. So we're kind of acting accordingly, you know, or planning our steps accordingly. So it was like once someone kind of gave me the tip of, hey, you know, you might need paper backup if, if these things happen. And I'm like, so then at that point, it was always kind of ringing in my head that, oh, this situation could arise. And it's always just better to, you know, have that stored away just in case. It's like having a backup backup plan, you know, which is like a very and I annoying thing. Um, you know, just in case and the anticipation of. So yeah, it's like that that first function. Um yeah, it it'll pull a little bit either way. Um and that can be very trusting of people um and just be like, oh well that's not gonna happen. And mm-hmm. I think also in like in socionics, you guys would have role SI where I have like polar SI. I think that's a good example. Oh, like kind of stealing that trick from SI users and being like, oh, that could help me. Like sort of sounds like role SI, but interesting. anyway, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I actually learned that from an ESTJ. Uh, yeah. I like that from an EJ too. Um, good stuff. We love some EJs. Um, okay. So let's see. Last, last question here. Um, uh, do, 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 okay. Um, you're at a friend's wedding. She spilled wine on her dress before the reception and is now crying with you in the bathroom. What do you do? Hmm. I said red wine, right? It's red. It's not white wine. That one makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is so is she in the wedding at all? Or just a guest? No, it's her wedding. Oh, it's her wedding. Yeah. Wearing a white wedding dress, spilled red wine on it before after the ceremony, but before the reception. Okay. Well, I personally would, you know, I would, like, be sad with her as mm-hmm. far as the the dress goes. And I would be like, oh, wow, this really sucks. But in that moment, when those kind of things happen, like, I don't know what it is, but I just, like, completely, like, go into hyper, like, I don't know. I need to, like, figure this, like, figure out what to do in the situation. Mm-hmm. So I'll be like, okay we need to find another dress for her to wear. So I would be like, okay, which probably there was another dress. And Mm -hmm. I would be, I would tell her, I would try to reassure her and be like, okay, so your wedding dress is messed up right now, but we're going to make it like, we're going to, um, we're going to get it taken care of. But what we need to do right now, it's your wedding. You need to be happy because like Mm -hmm. probably her emotions are going to be like super high and like, different like different emotions happening at once so it, she's going to be a little chaotic in some ways hold on sorry about that I don't... that's okay um mm-hmm. but I would just say like hey let's get you let's just take you back get a different dress and we're gonna have a fun time and like I would make sure that she had like the best time and like forgot about it yeah Cause in the moment it's going to be sad, but she's going to forget about it. Cause like, we're going to have fun, like on the dance floor or whatever. And like, mm-hmm. I'd over- almost reassure her and say like, you're probably going to be able to move around and have more fun in this dress anyways. Like your wedding dress looks gorgeous on you, but yeah, yeah. that's what I would do. Yeah. I also would turn it into like the hyper, like trying to find a solution mode and also mm-hmm. like en- ensuring her that it's going to be okay. But the thing that, sort of stumped me about that question is that um personally I I like have never been one to dream about my wedding and like my dress and like all these sorts of things like I feel like it's a lot a a lot of times a waste of money and I just don't relate Mm -hmm. um but perhaps I'll feel differently one day Mm -hmm. um and I I know it's a special time and everything and so but really what I would be looking for is what is her emotion like because I I wouldn't even know like I I wouldn't assume she's sad I wouldn't assume she's happy like I I would just I wouldn't know how I would feel in that situation so I would be like kind of stumped like oh no sort of eyes out (laughs) like if she's ball like I would really try and dissect what she 
really feels. And mm-hmm. and I would say like maybe ask questions like, is it the dress? Do you feel your nights ruined? Like, is it because you feel like you've dreamed about this day forever? Is it because you're embarrassed to go out there? Like, I would really want to know. And like, I wouldn't want to try and do what I can to make her have fun as soon as possible. I mean, like, I would want that. But like, even if we were late to like if this is like my best friend and even if we were like late to the thing like I'd be like you know if you are not obligated to do anything at all like do you want to talk about it do you not want to talk about it like I would want to find the dress but I guess what I would first want to know is does she want to find the dress or does she need a moment to mm-hmm. cry yeah. and like I would sort of try and decide that I guess and I mean. I, and if she felt comfortable wearing the dress as is and being like, whatever I spilled, then I would encourage that. Or like we, I would say like, I'll buy you a dress now if I have to, like I I would do whatever I would have, would, I would do whatever it took to make them happy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, I guess what I, what I would say, I would also become on like high alert mode to try and really just see what are they feeling because I I would have no clue what to feel at that situation you know but yeah that's so weird because like I feel like I would just I kind of just know I don't know it's it's weird because like in those situations because I haven't been in the exact same situation but like that person is probably feeling high emotions and like you said I would like you know, let them cry it out and stuff. But I think there's something to be said about like, just trying to steer them away, because they're already going to be hyper like emotional, but be like, yeah, like, I mean, I can pour wine on me too, or something. But again, chances are they have another dress, I would like, even if I would let them have, um, I don't know, maybe five to 10 minutes, like to cry, and like really get it out. And I would like empathize with them. But then I would be like, all right, you're going to regret, like, we're going to, like, go out there, because you're going to think back, and you're going to think, what, I mean, you're going to think about, like, this wine got on my dress, but, like, how many memories that you could be making, or how many, like, you know, you're going to want to be out there, and I wouldn't necessarily say that to them, but I would just be, like, we're going to do this, and, like, go Mm -hmm. out there with them, and kind of, because I really, I mean, I've been in situations like that and like where they're even still upset, but like they go out there and they end up like thanking me later. Cause like, even though they didn't want to go out something mm-hmm. that important, they're going to really look back and think of it like as a funny situation or like something that like, Oh, I can't believe I did that. But like, I ended up having like a good time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And I would assume that it would be high emotions. And maybe what I'm used to is that my best friend's an ENFP type four that wants to dwell. And so that's maybe where, um, whenever I'm thinking of what to do is, um, her and a a few of my other like NFP friends, I've like learned the hard way that they don't want me to change how they feel. And if they want to cry for a second, like, I mean, like I, I would still try and get them to go out there because selfishly I would want to go out there. Like mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to be helping them that long, but I, w- I would do it if that's what I felt that they needed. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, like I, I, yeah, it'd be really like, and I think I would want to go really like deeper than just knowing that they're sad. I would want to know why they were sad. Like, is it because of a childhood fantasy? Is it because of, like the moment Mm -hmm. and if it was a deeper thing then that's when I would say but if it was just like a silly thing then I would definitely be like oh nobody cares you know yeah so yeah you'd want to dive into a little bit deeper that makes sense yeah I think like for me I would I would go more into like work mode like I'd be like okay like how can I fix this like how can I like can we staple this piece upside down and just make it look like it was supposed to be that way and no one will notice? Can I learn how to sew in a few minutes? Like, does anyone have a needle and thread? Like, can we just cut this off? You know, there has to be a way to kind of work around like the tragic incident to make it less tragic. And then, you know, if there is another piece of clothing, we can do that. But 
I feel like everything is like solvable to an extent, but that the, the thing is, is if they don't want it to be solved, like if that was just like, they wanted that dress and like nothing else, you know, then it's like, okay, well then you have to play that card. And so then you kind of have to go with more of the, like, listen, it's just, it, at the end of the day, it's just to address the, the moments and the experiences are going to be 10 times more valuable out there anyway, which is what I would tend to believe if it was me. But then yeah. there's always like the, so like, I think all of us, it's like, you know, we can go with like, it's more like the experience. Like it's the moment that's the precious part, right? It's not the sensory. That's the precious part, but it's like, yeah someone who has sensory over you know intuition they may be like no but like I was that dress was what was more important to me than like I've been like you were saying I've been thinking about this single dress for years and that was what I was so excited about so it's like a hard triangulation and yeah you just have to kind of figure out what the person where what angle they're coming from and then you can fix it fix it and then if not make the best of it (laughs) yeah that's a good point like about the sensing and intuition and like I imagine an intuitive that was more interested in fashion or dresses you know it's Mm -hmm. not it's not that hard of a line but it is weird that I personally would be like oh I don't really care if it was a dress or I mean like I it's easy for me to say that but I also like have I have no idea how I would feel I'm not married (laughs) you know like (laughs) Totally. Yeah. Well, Emily, your cat's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this, this so is Claire. Oh, uh-huh. and so fluffy in those eyes. <laughs> I feel you- like I've learned a lot about TE from this as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, I think it's a cool dividing line because... Yeah. I don't know. It's both like you're, we're all for the external world in kind of a savior state, you know, there's like this practicality to our approaches in how things actually happen. And I find I see the word actually so much. It's annoying. I don't know what that is. And I've heard other people with similar functions do the same thing, but, um, so it's like we're really for this external world in in a sense of this like practicality, but how it translates is so kind of it can be a little different from like one side to the other. But yeah, and it's interesting like hearing your your answers too because a lot of times I think people can assume that like F E is nice and T E is mean or whatever, and which mm-hmm. is just not true. And I think that in there's a lot of things that T E does that is maybe even more useful or more loving and or like you know not not that one is more than the other but like I never would have thought to move someone's dress up or like learn to sew and like I I mean tea is more effective generally like if you would have if someone would have been there to then fix the dress then that would create maybe more happiness than the fe user being like oh no guy or like it's okay you know I, I wouldn't have even thought about fixing the dress because I would have felt not capable of fixing it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, so like, I don't know. Both could be used to influence the external world in a positive like way, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think one thing I've been thinking of too is the fact that in, in my head, I always kind of assume that people with FE, they kind of had FI in there too. Like the kind of, they both just kind of went together. But the more that I've been, you know, talking to you guys and talking to other people, I realize that like the, how different the functions kind of interact. And I'm like, wow, people with FE really don't have FI right there. You know, it's yeah. just it's kind of different. And so then I've been trying to process that and be like, well, how does, how does that work? You know, how does it work on the flip side? But um, yeah. That'll yeah. Be and I, th- and I think too, that that's very common for people to think, and we all do this like with our own functions, but it's, it's common. Be- and then I think it can make TJs think that FJs are being like biased because they think that we have the FI in there mm-hmm. as well. That's interesting. Well, at least that's what, what I've noticed. And like, on the other hand, I might think that the TJ is being like really judgmental or critical when really you don't have like the TI mm-hmm. as much, you know, yeah. so. Interesting. Yeah. 
Thanks, Becca. All right, Emily, any last words? No. <laughs> it's interesting to hear even like from you, Emily, how FE is used as a helpful tool versus your freaking like savior from <laughs> crazy dominant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out, spending your night with me. It felt very yeah. awesome. <laughs> thank and you thanks for yeah. having me we'll kick around some other ideas some other time i'm sure because yeah yeah, yeah good to see right. you both good to bye. see yeah. you as well all right bye, bye.